chemical reactions and equations video series. This is the third video and in the first video you have learnt the balancing part 1, the basics. Second video was about balancing part 2. You learnt the steps in balancing. Third video is about practice. Yeah, this we already have decided in the last class itself. So today we are going to practice some iconic equations, some you know different patterns of equations. But before that, if you are listening to me for the very first time and you missed previous videos, guys, you are listening to Dr. Nazma Sheikh and this is the daily sessions being conducted by Vedant. I have been teaching chemistry from past 8 years and today I am here to help you out understand balancing chemical equations once more, okay? But then to be able to learn the best out of these classes, especially chemical reactions while classes, you should be having a pen and a book with you and then you should practice along with me you should write along with me that's when you are going to learn okay done so there you go with the very first equation dear students it is c4h10 make a note of it c4h10 plus o2 leads to formation of co2 and h2o okay now we are going to balance this equation i hope you all remember the steps in balancing but still once more a quick recap when you are balancing a chemical equation there are three steps that you have to apply step one step one is you have to count the number of atoms right and what is step two step two is you have to equalize the number of atoms using multiplication hmm? nothing else later step three is changing the prefixes changing the prefixes of the chemical equation using the numbers that you have multiplied with okay these are the three steps but then how do you count the numbers and what is prefix these all things we have discussed in the first video right if in case you have missed them out make sure you go back and watch huh? right so c4 h10 first follow the instructions and then do do i mean apply the procedure First, identify the left hand side and right hand side. Identified? Left hand side is here and right hand side is here. Correct? And now, count the number of atoms on both the sides. You see carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Same on the other side as well, but the numbers might vary. How many carbons over here? You are having C4. That means 4 carbons. Write it. Hydrogens. 10 hydrogens. Oxygens. There are 2. In the same way, you count the number of atoms on the other side. Quickly, make it fast. Done? That's really quick then. Did you get the same numbers? If yes, yeah, that's very good. You are doing good. So now, you have to observe the number of atoms on both the sides. 4 carbons, 1 carbon. Not equal. 10 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens. 2 oxygens and 3 oxygens never equal. Right? So, what kind of chemical equation do you call this as? She call it as a skeletal equation, right? So this is a skeletal equation. What is a skeletal equation? Something on in which the left hand side atoms are not equal to right hand side atoms. And now you have to balance it. What is a balanced chemical equation? Where the number of atoms on both the sides are equal, correct? But then the question is how would you balance it? How do you balance this? by applying the three steps so now let me go to the whiteboard so that i can explain this to you in brief again but then you have to follow the instructions and you have to do along with me okay so now start balancing from where is the question right? it's okay you can take up any atom of your choice but i have a suggestion here always start balancing with those atoms whose numbers the number of atoms are even on both the sides or at least even and one on both the sides. So what happens is, if you start balancing with the numbers like even and odd, like this, it gets complicated. So don't complicate things. Always find simplest ways, okay? So now I'm starting with carbon. So carbon has four atoms this way and only one atom on the other side. What can we do? You can multiply with some number to get the answer four. So which number? Obviously four. But hold on. The important thing to notice is step 2 and step 3 are parallelly conducted. You equalized carbons. Now you have to apply step 3. 
you have to apply step 3 as in you would just have to place this number as a prefix in the equation where on the right hand side and in right hand side where before carbon so here is carbon and here I place 4 why are you placing only as prefix why not as power or superscript subscript no 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 you should not place wherever you want yeah there are some rules of balancing and this is the second rule what was the first rule that you have to use only multiplication in order to equalize right so now it is 4CO2 that's cool carbons are dumb but then hold on one second did you notice if there is any change in the count of oxygens there is right so how many oxygens do you have freshly I want the number fine how many oxygens are there there are eight oxygens here plus one here so now fresh count is nine done moving on moving on with hydrogen now 10 and 2 so which number should I multiply this hydrogens with so that my answer becomes 10 why should my answer become 10 because I want to equalize it on both the sides that's fine okay so it has to be 5 right yeah so two fives are 10 and then you have to place this 5 somewhere in the equation so you place wherever and tell me where I have to place it yeah where we have to place it we have to place it on the right hand side and before hydrogen over here so it becomes 5H2 but hold on and notice if there is a change in the count of oxygens again so you are getting this right after every change that you make in the chemical equation you have to wait for a second and check if there is any change or if there is any per any count change is there in the number of atoms okay usually it does exist but then sometimes it might not as well so now I'm having five oxygens plus eight oxygens five plus eight which is equal to 13 so fresh count is 13 yeah hydrogens are equal but then look at oxygens now I have 2 and 13 so now how is this possible to balance 2 and 13 is, is there a way can you multiply with some such number that your answer becomes 13 why not you can multiply with 7.5 oh is it possible to use fractions it is possible you can use fractions no problems yeah so now it is 2 into 7.5 which is oh wow wait one second it's not 2 into 7.5 it is 2 into 6.5 I'm so sorry yeah so 2 into 6.5 is 13 so now this 13 is the total number of oxygens but then which is the number that you have to be placing in the equation you should be placing the 6.5 correct so here you go now the total equation has become c4h10 plus 6.5 into o2 which leads to formation of co2 how many 4 plus h2o how many 5 now check the number of atoms carbon 4 this is not sulfur this is carbon and on other side 4 hydrogens 10 and on other side 10 oxygens 6.5 into 2 is 13 and on other side also 13 but in case you're not satisfied or you're confused about placing this decimals or fractions in the equation you have an option you can multiply the entire equation by some number maybe say 2 and you can equalize the I mean you can multiply entire equation by 2 so that this fraction becomes whole number you have the choice but then it's not necessary you write fractions till you get full marks huh done so this is how we balance equations and now the balanced equation is written over there right here done now let's talk about one more equation but this time you are going to balance it so this equation can you identify this equation is this is a very famous equation which is essential to live life h2o plus co2 gives c6 h12 o6 plus o2 you call it as photosynthesis right the life-changing reaction 
So now you have to balance this equation. Now your turn. You do it and tell me the answers in the chat box. So first identify left hand side and right hand side. Hurry up guys. You are going to do this. Yep. Left hand side and right hand side. By the end of this session you should be done with balancing. Identify the atoms on both the sides. Hydrogen, oxygen and carbon. I am not writing anything. I am just going to tell you, instruct you because I want you to do everything, right? So hydrogen, oxygen and carbon, both the sides, same atoms. How many oxygens? On the left hand side, how many oxygens? You have two plus one, three oxygens here. Hydrogens, two. Carbons, one. Correct? Right? Okay, fine. So, if in case somebody is stuck, to help them out, even I will do to some extent, okay? But then, you have to do everything else. C6, H12, O6 plus O2. So, one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. On other side, how many are there? I am just taking it this way. There are six carbons, there are 12 hydrogens, and there are how many oxygens? Six, is it? Are you sure? 6 plus 2, there are 8 oxygens. Did you notice this? 6 plus 2 oxygens. Here are 6, here are 2. How to equalize? So start with carbon. It's easy because you have an even number and you just have one on the other side. So your answer finally, in order to be able to balance, your answer finally should be how much? You should have 6 carbons here. That's it. And you can multiply this one with any number of your choice to get 6. Which number can you multiply with? Obviously 6, right? So where should you place this 6? You tell me. Before carbon dioxide, isn't it? Before CO2, that means here. You have to be placing it over here. 6 CO2. Fine, 6 CO2. But then what you have to check? You have to constantly check. Every time you make a change in equation, you have to constantly check if there is any change in the number of atoms of other species. So here, is there a change in number of oxygens? Of course. How many oxygens are there? 6 into 2. 12 oxygens are there. Okay, 12 oxygens are there. But what about this? 12 plus 1. You have 13 oxygens. So it's not 3, it's 13. Done. Next, carbons is over. Next is hydrogens. 2 and 12. Pretty easy. Your answer should be 12. Are you all doing? I am doing it again. <laughs> Are you all doing? So you have to multiply this existing number 2 with some number so that your answer becomes 12. Which number can you multiply with 20? You all know tables. 2 into 6. So you have to multiply with 6. Okay. But since you are multiplying, you have to make that change in equation. Is there any change in the count of oxygens? 6 oxygens are here. But then here are 12 oxygen. So it's not 13, it's 18. Okay. Now, come to oxygens only. What else is left? You have 18 oxygens here. You just have 8 oxygens here. 18 and 8. How can you multiply 8 with some such number to get 18? Hold on. Look how many places do you have oxygen first. You have oxygen in two places. So, if you multiply at once with one single number, where would you place that number? Before here or before this? Where? Okay, fine. I'll tell you that. But before that, can you tell me what number can you use to multiply this oxygen so that you get 18? Simple. You already have 8. How many more you need? You just need 10 more, right? So, since you have 8 and you need 10 more, what do you choose is this number, right? And now you have to be multiplying the O2 with 5 so that it becomes 10. 5 into 2, 10, right? And now you already have 6 here. So 10 plus 6, 16. So it's working out this way. So you multiply only the elemental oxygen, only O2. Don't go to the glucose molecule. Why? If you go to glucose molecule, say 2C6H12O6. 
oxygen is not getting balanced keep that aside moreover you are ending up imbalancing carbon and hydrogen again so don't do that so your choice is to make a modification only here now you need totally 10 more oxygens correct you have 8 you need 10 more so that 10 more should come from here itself so now what if i take 6 o2 it becomes 12 oxygens here you have 6 here 12 plus 6 is of course 12 plus 6 is 18 are you clear so look at this equation in this equation on the product side you are having oxygen in two places when you have the same atom in two places you should be able to rightly decide which place to start balancing with okay and moreover in such cases it is a little confusing to deal with this balancing also like this question mark in other cases we were just putting one number which was easy but now you directly cannot write like i can't write two three four or whatever whatever you write you can't balance 18 right so so you have to stop for a while and observe the products decide where you have to make changes and thereby you have to start balancing this is a pattern this is a type of reaction but then you don't worry because you will not be given so complicated equations for one mark done but then still you have to be aware of it huh if you have looked at the previous uh, reaction this one burning of uh, c4 h10 you were having oxygen in two places but then you did not have that confusion isn't it because the balancing happened in one shot correct yes i hope guys you are able to understand how to balance the chemical equations you are right but then whatever i have told you today are two typical models of equations there are so many more models that you need to practice in case you feel that you want me to give a worksheet for balancing with some 10 equations or whatever make sure you let me know in the comment section i'll get it added to the description box that is when you let me know if you want it okay if you want the practice balancing sheet you please ask me in the comment section then i will give it to you okay done so guys i hope you have learned balancing balancing as said is very simple it is just like a puzzle but then it's completely practice based you practice you get it if you don't practice you don't get it it is as simple as that right so we are concluding balancing by today and next class we'll start talking about chemical reactions we'll start talking about how to identify chemical reactions okay so in class 10 cbse there is a topic types of chemical reactions which is again important there are some short short topics like right, from which questions will come one is balancing other one is types of chemical reaction definite question that's why we are picking up these topics so i hope these videos are helping you out in case you have something else to learn or you want to learn something you can let me know your suggestions in the comment section because after this chapter we'll also do the second chapter acid spaces and salts so in case you have idea about the chapter you have something difficult that you want to learn don't hesitate letting me know because these videos are for you if you are not understanding or if you are not get, getting benefited this is of no use isn't it so you tell me what do you want we'll do that for you done so I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Keep practicing balance, balancing chemical equations. Done? Bye, everyone.